Hello, this is hopefully a quick guide to installing the freeware version of DaVinci Project Server on a QNAP device. I'm going to assume a few things. Uh, one, that you're familiar with the third-party freeware version of DaVinci's Project Server. This is a piece of software that's designed to mimic Blackmagic's DaVinci Project Server, but it was built to run on Linux, which they do not provide. And in this case, I'm going to show you how to install it on a QNAP NAS, Network Attached Storage. The additional things that I assume is that you've been to Wirebear's website, the folks that built this. It's got all the information you really need. He has also made a great video that explains the ins and outs of getting this installed. Uh, the reason for this guide is there's a few subtle things that I had to figure out to get it running as a container on QNAP. And so that's the that's the other and final assumption is that you have a working knowledge of, of QNAP. And so let's first go to the QNAP web interface. Okay, you need to have Container Station installed on your QNAP. If you don't, you can go to App Center and uh, do a search for Container Station and easily install it. I've already got one going, and I even have a um, container already running. But this is typically the interface that you would use to install containers in QNAP, and there's probably a way to do it through this interface. But using the guide that Wireware made, I'm going to try to stick to that as close as possible and show you how you see it here in the interface. So I'm going to close this for now, and let's take a look at his instructions. There's four folders that the container needs to point to. And so before we do anything, let's go ahead and build these so that they'll have a place to link to. So in the QNAP interface, let's open File Station. In my system, I happen to have an M2 drive that was not being used. And so I created a volume on it that I'm going to dedicate to this project server. All right, so here is our volume and we've got DV data. All right, so let's go ahead and, and create those folders that it's asking for. So we're going to create a folder, and the first one I'm going to call, I'm going to preface everything with DV, just in case I come across it, I'll know that this is something specific. Okay, we'll do hooks, jobs, and the most important one, database. All right, now the fourth one is backups. And backups, for their suggestion, that needs to be in a safe place. And so on my main network storage, I have a folder that already syncs with Dropbox. All right, so I created this folder already, but you could create one similar, DaVinci Project Server Backups. So we've got our folder set up. Going back to their guide under installation, there's this Docker run script, essentially. We're going to copy that. And then if you're on a Mac, you can do this in text edit, new document. In Windows, you can do this on Notepad. Okay, so I'm gonna paste that in there. Oh my God, that is tiny. All right, that's a little ridiculous, but you can see it. All right, so for the most part, we wanna keep this as a uh, default. Um, for their instructions, you need to enter your time code. I'm in the United States, central time zone. And so here we put America and then, okay, what was that? Forward slash, so America forward slash Chicago for central time zone. We'll leave the ports the same. All right, so this is where he essentially has a variable or a placeholder for the path to these folders that we just created. Okay, this is an edit. I um, made a mistake. I went through this entire video and realized um, I did not put these paths correctly. And this is precisely why I'm making this video is because the installation on the QNAP is just a little tricky. So it's very important to get these paths uh, perfectly correct. <clears throat> All right, let's go back to our QNAP interface and let's take a look at these folders that we created. Um, I think hooks is first. So let's right click on that, select properties, and it gives you the path. So it's, the SharePoint is DV data and then the, then the name of the folder. Um, 
we're going to go ahead and copy this. You don't need to, you can totally type that in. But all right, so let's replace this variable here with our new one. And this is what I made, made a mistake on that you got to be sure to do. You got to start your path with share. And then the SharePoint name, which in this case is DV data. Yours will very likely be different. And then the folder name that we just created it. For this one, I made DV underscore hooks. Okay, so let's select this and copy it because we did that the same thing for these other folders. So for database, we have shared DV data db underscore database, and then again for jobs, share db data, db underscore jobs. All right, and then for our backups, we have that in a folder that is designed or set up to sync with Dropbox for extra protection. And so in file station, I have that open here. Again, I'm gonna right click, choose properties. This is the path. I'm going to copy that path, go back to our script. I'm going to select this entire path, start with forward slash share, and paste in our path. And then we have our folder that we made, which was DV project server backups dv project server backups again you will want to enter whatever you made i'm going to go back to qnap make sure i got that folder right oh no look davinci project server backups i totally screwed it up i made it even longer Okay, capital letters matter. Let's go back and look. DaVinci Project Server Backups. DaVinci Project Server Backups. Okay, now let's double check everything. Oh, I uh, started over and I forgot to replace this. So the time zone, America, Chicago. All right, everything else is standard. And again, these um, paths are very specific and there's zero room for error. So you need to get those exactly correct. And it's important to save this text file because, and I would put it on your server or somewhere safe because you can use this exact same script to update the project server in the future if you need to. And again, when you update it, it's real important that you get these paths exactly the same. That way everything will link back up. Okay, it's looking good. All right, back in your QNAP interface, I'm gonna to go to control panels. This is the last thing you need to check. You need to make sure you have SSH connection and then you can click on edit access permission and make sure that your account is set up for permissions for SSH. SSH is the protocol that we use to log in. Okay, I'm going to select this script, copy it, and then open terminal. Your terminal will probably look different than mine. I've got mine to mimic a, uh, the old terminals that used on Unix systems back in the day. All right, so we're going to SSH into our QNAP. So the way you do that is type SSH, then your username, and then the at symbol, and then the IP address of your server. Type in the password. Okay, we're logged into the server and we're going to paste the script and hit return. Let it do its thing. It may take a few minutes, but it'll probably go pretty quick. All right, once we see the dollar sign, that means it's complete. So let's exit out of our server 
And now we're back in our local terminal. Let's exit out of there. You'll see the process completed and then you can quit terminal. All right, let's go back to our QNAP, click on container station and see what we got going on. All right, containers. This is a previous container that was running and here's our new studio server. All right, so one thing, I'm gonna expand the window here a little bit and you can see that uh, this IP address that it automatically assigned that may default to a great address for you. In our setup, in, in our studio, uh, that address does not work. So what I'm going to do, click on the gear and hit stop. This is equivalent to you know shutting down the server. All right, once that says stopped, let's click on the gear, scroll down to edit, and we go over here to network. And this is the uh, network setup that it automatically did with the IP address that doesn't work for my situation. So I'm going to delete that. And then we're going to add a network and we want this to be a bridge. And then I've already set up this virtual switch five. You may have your ethernet adapter already in there. All right, we want an IP, a static IP address. I had already predetermined that this was gonna be our IP address and we're going to click connect all right and we want to hit apply okay now let's boot up that computer again that server by clicking start looks like we're in good shape all right database system is ready to accept connections okay our container is running it's got an appropriate ip address okay from here you're going to want to go back to the WireBear webpage and follow the instructions for configuring your server. And so you will want to type in your server address that you just specified in container station and then colon 8543, and then follow his video and the rest of the directions for getting it all set up and you should be in good shape. One mistake I made the first time I set that up and the reason I'm doing it again now is I wanted to make sure that those files were being created, like the database file and everything. And so I went into file station, hoping that I could um, access those particular files. And it said, unable to perform this because you do not have enough permissions. And so I changed those permissions. Do not do that that was a huge mistake and it caused everything to malfunction so you're not going to have access to those specific folders you will have access to the backups folder but um like the database and the hooks and the jobs just you know don't don't change the permissions on it i hope this guide was beneficial to you and good luck to setting up your project server on a QNAP. later